porcupine head! Oh my god. Bro, I'm really about to get your pickle chin that boy. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant Miss Maya Fay was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the fact that this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Please state your name and profession to the court. Yeah, see, sir. My name's Dick Dumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides. Down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use the floor map of <laughs> Let me... <laughs> Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. The cause of death. Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue? Floor plans added to the court record. Now, Detective. Yes, sir? You immediately arrested with Smile Fay, who was found at the court at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had our evidence. She did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshu? Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and her lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. While we had a witness account describing her, the witness saw Miss Mayo Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination what? Or cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. <sighs> Smack. Okay, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked a lot. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Maya Faye's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and, you arri and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. Th that's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. 
So tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Y yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With your funky oh heavy clothes and your spiky hair. <laughs> <laughs> you two stand out like you two stand out like like suspicious people at a crime scene. <laughs> well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my point. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Y yes If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? Huh? Did I- did, did I- that hurt me? Uh, 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 I heard it. I heard it. I heard it too. We all heard it. Exactly. What about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure ain't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, mm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Sorry. I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony, hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, detective. Y yes, Your Honor. Why didn't you testify this? Uh, why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor. Sir, try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross examination. Cross examination. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Detective Gumshoe. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and movies. This isn't movies, though. This isn't a movie, detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard of many cases, no? Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Uh, yes, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. Uh, can I present anything? No. The victim told us the name of the killer, of her killer. Order, order. That didn't go so well. But that's right, what he said. That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. A few moments later. Objection! Detective Gumshoe. 
There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say the victim Maya Faye wrote this note that she was accusing the defendant Maya Faye. That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written this. Ha! <laughs> this is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. What? No butting your way out of this, detective. <laughs> order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? The day of the murder, the day after the murder, I forgot. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution point begin. <laughs> the autopsy report is outdated, your honor. <coughs> what? What? A second op a second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. <laughs> Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. Mm. No! No way! <laughs> Your order. It's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. <laughs> that is all. That boy is good. Mm-hmm. Good and terrible. Oh, I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. <laughs> Why does the right you look shocked? Something you want to say? <laughs> You're a sham, Edgeworth. The detective's the sham. I'm a sham. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham! How could you give me a faulty report? Huh, I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe? Oh. I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Uh, I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation, is it? What, but... but I... Um... <laughs> Your Honor, I had to submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. I have to report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests that the victim has identified the killer. I suppose that's obvious. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness Miss April Ward. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Oh. Oh lord, okay. <laughs> oh god. Witness your name, please. Mm, April May at your service. <sighs> Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness well refrained from wanton winking. Or, oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the hearts of every man in this courtroom. 
Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like, um, in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. This hotel is directly across from the Fane Co. Law Offices. Um, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. Mm, it was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defense chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one, to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Oh my god. <laughs> then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. Then, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. <sighs> <laughs> well, Your Honor, I see. His remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. What? Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? She got you too, bruh? Come on now. Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Faye's understudy. Or Miss Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. No, thanks. Yes, I'm doing it. I'll, gra I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. Only because I have a feeling Edgeworth don't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination. How do you know she was a defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just okay. Did I catch her? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. Wait a minute. I keep hitting the wrong shit. He's right. Yep, he's right. I question the testimony. Hold on a minute, that, that testimony stinks. W what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that you saw nothing. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed that her clothes before, wait, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh, oh, well, well, well. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her, except for, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Uh, what 
are you trying to say? You mean lawyer. <laughs> I, I saw what I saw. I, I just didn't think of the trifling little details were necessary, darling. <laughs> Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit to nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. <sighs> your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. <sighs> Witness testimony. All right. Um, first, let me look at. Okay, so. Blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. It's a conversation between the chief and Maya. The broken remains of glass in the floor. Found in Miss May's hotel room. Okay. I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. The other girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, the kind of statue we clock, the thinker, I think. Uh... Wait, wait, does she have more? Well... Does the accuracy of my report not startle you, Tiki? <laughs> okay. I uh, I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Okay, it wasn't time for me to do nothing yet. Cross-examination. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, the dodge, the first attack, and it's to the right. Is that right as in your right, as you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right! It was my right! Hand right! Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her! How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes! That's what you, I mean, that's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun. <laughs> what happened then? And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, the kind of special. Miss May. What you said just now was quite revealing. <gasps> revealing? Oh, you like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I can't believe I got that. Okay. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Ooh. Ooh. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, er. No, shut up. The, win <laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with the trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. What? No! But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've called murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <sighs> Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. <sighs> that was close. If you stop me there, the trial will be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it. Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co? N no! Hey, I didn't say that! What? 
heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law officers of Fay and Co. with a murder. Wait, the law officers of Fay and Co. with a murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have rung. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard a clock go off in the building next door. Shut up! You have proof that she could not. Amateurs, amateurs, listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the court, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. Then I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard. The prosecution denies your request. What? On what grounds? This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objection sustained. Damn. Time to switch directions quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? Uh, I don't think there's nothing else I can do from here. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty, it's broken, the batteries are dead. Uh, the batteries are dead. It's... Could it be broken? Because it's... No. That clock is missing its clockwork. How, how could you poss- wait, how could you possibly- just take a look right now. <laughs> oh, 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 really? See anything interesting, your honor? It is, as the defense says, this clock is missing its clockwork. Let's go. It's quite empty. Hmm. I know. I don't know how I knew that. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May. Tsk tsk. <laughs> quite a show there. You wait. Quite a. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mister Wright. <laughs> he knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing. However, indeed the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it, if it was after the... If it was after the witnesses heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have emptied after she heard it. Might have been empty after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ho <laughs> ho! Impossible, of course. I have proof. Oh, you do? W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed. Oh. Uh. Okay. 
Die from above, my blunt object. Okay, I don't think that's it. Holds a conversation between the chief and Maya. A few moments later. How is it the phone? Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, oh, you have a girly phone. Well, wait, wait, this isn't my phone. <laughs> Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. Oh, a recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone. Oh, look at his eyes. Oh my god. The defendant's cell phone? This, this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. <laughs> this good, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. Oh. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Ooh, let's. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, oh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. <gasps> September 5th, 9.27 a.m. <gasps> Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know the weapon was a clock? <laughs> well, 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 isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I got so many. I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? It's simple. This clock was never in any store ever. What? <laughs> A friend of mine made that clock. Oh, only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. <laughs> Impossible! Everything is sold in stores. <laughs> Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> oh, excuses? Not on sale today. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> what is it to you, porcupine head? Oh my god. Bro, I'm really about to get your pickle chin that way. <laughs> that stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it and she should die for it. Die! <laughs> Whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves! This is the court of law, and the witness will remain calm! <laughs> oh. 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 Silly me! <laughs> Did I, um, like, lose it? <laughs> I guess I did! <laughs> <laughs> scary. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? <laughs> oh dear. Does the defense have any opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you know the weapon was a clock because you heard it you had heard about it. Oh, you held it. You held it, you had heard about it. Ooh. This is a familiar territory. I'll just use the same approach as with Larry. Miss May held that very clock in her hands. Mr. Wright, when was this? 
This is very straightforward. When she uses to strike the, the victim. When else? <laughs> order, order! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? April, May, you killed Maya Fey, I said. And when you struck the force of the impact made the thinker ring. That's when you hurt. Tsk, tsk. You truly are a work of art, Mr. Phoenix Wright. W what's that supposed to mean? It was you who just proved that the thinker was empty. Oh. Uh, of course. It wouldn't ring. What's more, the witness has a rock solid alibi. Miss May. Perhaps you could you could explain to the poor misguided Mr. Wright that you were in the hotel at the time of the murder. She, she can't prove it. She did it. It would be my pleasure. No, no way! Way, Mr. Lawyer! <laughs> Didn't the murder take place at 9 at night? Gee, this exact time I ordered some room service from the hotel bell lobby. Incidentally, the bellboy corroborates the witness story. Ergo, she was not at the crime scene, rock solid. Mr. Wright, you've just made a serious accusation against a perfectly innocent woman. Can I object? <laughs> so sorry, Your Honor. That didn't go. So, that didn't go so well. But if that's the case, then how did she know the thinker was a clock? Wait, Your Honor. I figured it out. There is one other way Miss April May could have known it was a clock. One way alone, and I have proof. Do I present anything? No? Okay. Well, proof, you say? Then the court will examine your proof, Mr. Wright. How did the witness know the thinker was a clock? Have a look at this. Uh, oh. That, 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 uh, oh, oh. I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Maya Fay's phone, were you not? <laughs> Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, I'll still have to prove, or you'll still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? <laughs> this is so dramatic. Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... The proof that the victim said on the phone... Wait, what? The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Wasn't it the phone? I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Maya, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I know. Again, what is it this time? It's a clock, okay? It's made to look like this. Okay, okay, okay. Miss April May? You use a wiretap to listen to this conversation, did you not? That's how you know the thinker was a clock. Hmm. 
Am I wrong? Yeah, I, I. Oh my God. Your honor, this is ridiculous. Your honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? <clears throat> Miss May? Shut up! All of you! What gives you the right? You, you lawyer! I, it's not fair. All of you on me like that oh so I'm the bad girl is that it is that it <laughs> that's a little final blow you did it didn't you why the wiretap I want to know why Miss May, why did you tap her phone? <laughs> Answer the question. Do I have to? <laughs> Isn't this a murder trial? Is it tippity tapping or irrelevant? <laughs> God, she's saying exactly what Edward wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant answer the question while this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice he has a point well miss may do you have an explanation for the court at the time of the murder i was in my hotel room getting my room service how could i have killed her if you don't believe me just ask the bellboy well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Right. On with the cross-examination. Okay, okay, let's do it. What exactly do you have left to examine, Mr. Wright? This April May has admitted to the wiretap, yes? But that bears no relevance to the case at hand. Murder. There's no way you can prove any connection. Uh-oh. I think this can be the end. Then I believe the prosecution. Okay, so I can't. I can't do that again. Ms. Edgeworth, does the prosecution have any other witnesses to call? None, Your Honor. She's the last. But that means Maya's guilty. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. Okay, can I call him now? <laughs> the defense will like to call the bellboy after all. Tsk, tsk, tsk. As I thought. May I remind you, dear Mr. Wright, should you question the bellboy? And Miss April May's alibi proves to be solid, then by default, your client Miss Maya Fay will be pronounced guilty. Are you prepared to accept my conditions? What the hell? Edgeworth. He's got me backed into a corner. But I don't see any other ways to take this. I accept. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. All right. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Oh, he still got the tray. Okay. Yes, sir. I receive your summons to the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very well, sir. Witness testimony. 
I am the head bell boy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May, or Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at a precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. <coughs> I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. I can prove Miss May was involved with the murder now. Maya will be finished. Alright. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. H how can you be certain? I checked Miss May in person, sir. So you check people in and you're a bellboy? Not only did I see her in all of her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them and I. The point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Wait, whoa, he saw what? What are you- <laughs> I just- I just realized what I think he just said. I saw them. Who's them? You saw them things? He saw them things. Okay. The point being, I remember her quite well, sir. <laughs> yes, what then? That just distracted me. Okay. She has one ice cold. A few moments later. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought well, when I brought the room service, sir, she she the guest she favored me with some of oh and oh, oh. <laughs> oh okay, it's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Well, why would she have done that? I I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. There's a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Uh-oh. Is, is that it? Tsk, tsk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. <clears throat> it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I, I can't let this happen, can I? Oh, we're not giving up. <clears throat> Well, wait! Please, wait! Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it. Now... This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Check in, room service, bed. Ooh, bed making? Check in, room service. Check in. Tell me about check in. 
tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. Oh, all right. There we will, sir. My first thought was that she was beautiful, a beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me, what exactly was a, a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir. But even, even I'd have little chance with her. Love her there. What did he say? Right, what? What did you say? Oh, er, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this your, in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you are normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good baristas there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention if it wasn't... He asked me not to mention it if I wouldn't specifically ask her. You, you fool! <laughs> My throat. <laughs> I've done it. I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of the new fact, I hold that it's... <laughs> in light of the new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... Oh? Ooh, the bellboy? Oh, can I just accuse him like that? Your Honor, Mr. Wright, it was the bellboy who confirmed Miss May's alibi. And this, in turn, confirms the bellboy's alibi. He was in the hotel. Well, sure, sure, if you put it that way. I do put it that way, and I trust you will too. But what if they were in cahoots? You have evidence of this? Um, no, Your Honor. Mr. Wright! S sorry, Your Honor. Give me one more chance. Simple. It was... Okay. <laughs> I picked all the wrong answers. The man who checked in with Miss May, Oof. your honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. M my, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like that if it was too late, would it you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. <laughs> I'll start, amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defendant's argument. I expect the, the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. 
Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Miss Mayafe. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 224 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Ray! You were amazing in there! Really? Yeah! I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It said shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what's happening with me? Or so, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. Oh, that was him. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm gonna go find out about this man. More about this man. Do you think, or do you think he was the one who maybe so... Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you! I saw a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. She was caught I don't know how much good this would do. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center and it's up to me to set her free. Alright y'all, that's gonna do it for this episode of Phoenix Bright Ace Attorney. We, I told y'all we was gonna get that girl May. I told you we was gonna get April May. I knew something wasn't right about her. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna get into the next one, the next episode, and find out who this guy is. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next trial. Bye.